Hi and welcome to another tutorial from Homs and today we're looking at the top tools you must know if you plan to use Blender to do motion design and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the curve modifier. Now the curve modifier is a powerful modifier. In this tutorial it's going to be short and simple because there's not much to it on the surface but when you combine it with other tools in Blender it becomes a force to be reckoned with. So especially like with shape keys it works hand in hand where shape keys have basically a linear straight arm direction of animation and the curve modifier helps you to create arcs so when you use the arcs and the shape keys you can get arc um, vertex manipulation which is really really nice to see and gives you a lot more power and a lot more expression in your animations so in future tutorials the next two in fact we're going to be looking at applications of the curve modifier in practical projects but in this tutorial we're just going to take a look at the tool itself and how it functions in blender okay so i have my default scene here nothing special has been done to it and in order to use the curve modifier we need a target object and a target curve so we have our target object which is the cube here i'm just going to scale it down a bit and we're going to go ahead and add a target curve so i'm going to hit shift and a i'm going to go to curve and we're going to just select a basically a curve at the top here cool and with this we're just going to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 and we see we have this we have our curve here just normal basic curve with two points cool so the next thing is that we're going to select the object that's going to be deformed in this case is the cube All right. now in this situation with the cube what we can do here now is we can um, go to our modifiers tab and search for curve modifier I have used it recently so it's at the top for me and we can see we have the curve modifier here and we have some options here just three we can have the curve modifier only operate on certain vertices we can choose the deform axis and we could we have to tar pick the curve object which we're targeting so first let's pick the curve object which is this space area here and we can see that we are getting some deformation the deform axis refers to the axis on of the curve that is most dominant and what that means is that the majority of the curve seems to be moving along the x line so the x line is considered the most dominant if it was moving in the y direction then the y direction would be the most dominant and if it was moving in the z then the z would be the most dominant so you have to judge based on the curve which one is the most dominant but sometimes on first glass you can't tell because you have a complex curve so in that instance you can simply just toggle through them and see which one it is until you find it good as we can see here the object is actually being deformed by the curve here right it's deformed the curve and it's along the curve but as we notice is that the the object is not at the origin of the curve right and um, it's away from the curve here so what we would have to do typically in this case is that we'd have to move along the y and the z until we move the object towards the curve to get the best deformation which leads to the next point when using the curve modifier to get the most accurate deformation the object being deformed should be on the curve itself or as close to the curve as possible if it's on the curve the deformation is the most accurate if it's away from the curve the deformation starts to look awkward and come off of axis right so that's the next thing it should be along the same it should be on the curve itself good now to ensure that your object is on the curve what you can do is that you can use the origin points so if I come back to this and take this off good and just move it back along the Y good what we can do is to make sure that we select the curve select where the curve animate where the curve direction will start we can't see the curve direction here but if we go and check normals we can see it so I think you check normals in one of these areas here yep and we can see the normals up here and that gives us the indication of the direction of the curve so this would be the end uh, start and this would be the end if you want to switch normals you can go to segments and switch direction up here cool and what we do we're going to go ahead and hit shift and s and we're going to select um, snap the cursor to the selected and then we can go ahead and snap 
the cube here, we shift an S to the cursor with selection to cursor. Good. And this will make sure that when we apply the curve modifier, good. Oh, oh and there's one more thing. You also want to make sure that the origin of the point of the curve itself is at the starting point as well. So you can go to, um, to do this, you can just do the same thing that we did with the curve. Just have the curve selected, go shift and S and go select. Oh, go, oh, have the curve selected, sorry. Go to object, set origin, and then go to origin to, um, to 3D cursor. And with that, when we apply our curve modifier, you'll see that we're not going to get a movement in the box outside of its deformation. So we go ahead and select the curve. We see that it's, it's stayed exactly where it needs to stay. And um, all that's happened is that the box has been deformed, which is the perfect outcome for the curve modifier. So the trick to this is that if you want the curve modifier and the object to be in the same place, you want to set the origin of the object to the center of mass or to the center of the volume in this case, which is the cube. Right. You want to make sure that the origin point of the curve um, is set to the start of where the curve animation is. Good, that's two. And for third, you want to make sure that the cube and the origin point of the curve are both in the exact same position or as close as possible. Right, and that will make make sure that every single time that you use the curve modifier of an object, right, you don't have any weird deformation all over the place, it, or it's in, it goes far out. Right, this will make sure that the two of them are always together, so you don't have this problem again. Right. Cool. So with that, now we have the cube being deformed. Now the def deformation is kind of strange. It looks more like a parallelogram than it does say a curve box. And that's because our box doesn't have much topology on it. So we can always go ahead and hit Control and R for the loop cut. Um, and we can add a bit more topology just by scrolling with the mouse button here. Press Tab to come out of it. And we can see that it's actually taking more of a curve to form. Then if we move it along the X, we can see that we're getting a lot more of a deformation. Cool. And this is very useful in and of itself because it gives you interesting effects. But there is something even more powerful that we can do with this. Um, and we're going to take a look at using vertexes or using a single vertice, sorry, to place along this curve. Go ahead and just hide this for a bit. I'm going to create a plane. And because our cursor is already at the origin, we don't have to do much here. And what we're going to do is delete these vertices and just have this vertex right here. So next we can go over to the object and we're just going to make it a bit more visible. Um, but oh, just before we do that, actually, let's go ahead and snap this to the cursor. So it's right at the origin point. Next, let's go ahead and press E to extrude out. Uh, a, a single vertice good and this is just for the purpose of us being able to select this a bit easier because it's a vertice is kind of small so what we can do here is we're going to go over to the the um, bounds here and with the bounds we're just going to go ahead and select box or sphere and that way, when we want to move this vertex, this vertex, it's easier because we have a bigger target. So we can hit G and X, and it will move along the curve. So next, we want to do add a mod add the modifier to this. Let's add the same curve modifier. Let's select the object here. Good. And now, when we push G and X, we can see it moves along the curve just nicely. Good. What we can do now is that we can apply a vertex parent to any object that we want to follow this, this curve. So if we don't want the deformation, but we want it to follow the curve, what we can do here now is parent this box here to this empty or to this vertice here. Good, make sure you have the right one selected. And hit Control and P. And 
hit select make vertex parent and what this will do is that now we can have the curve modifier move and the box will follow it along this curve so let's go ahead and move it and we're seeing it's following the curve here now this is very very powerful uh, this is why the curve modifier is just so much more useful than the um, path animation to or parent path parent to path because you can do something like this and because we're not using evaluation time keyframing this animation is far easier good also it's following the path but it's not constrained its rotation is not constrained so now we can rotate the box in any direction we want to even though it's following the path so rotation and scale are free while doing this animation even translation is free as well allowing for much more complex animations cool so this is the curve modifier in a nutshell um, it is a short one but it is an excellent tool and you can look forward to seeing the other two tutorials that will utilize this effect in a practical project so you can see why this tool is so powerful cool in the next one i'm not quite sure i remember the next one but the next um motion tool we'll go over will be um after the next two tutorials and then we'll look at we'll continue the series so if you enjoyed this tutorial give it a thumbs up if you have any questions be sure to ask i'll be happy to answer them once i am able and um as always you can leave your comments down in the in the comment section and tell me what you did not understand or or you can leave accommodations if you wish good also i've got my first patreon thank you very much i need to need to write the name of this patreon i think i'll put uh, the name up on the on the screen I, I don't know why i didn't show in my email but i didn't see it and this is from january 11 so um thank you to this patreon here i will put him on the screen in the sense of paid patreon and um, just say a big thank you and thanks for watching i'll continue we're going to go back to the regular schedule now so um yeah until i see you again in another tutorial get up and design a new dawn later